Welcome to Hispanic Biz Success Stories. I'm Momero Galicia. We have the pleasure of talking with business owners who built successful businesses. To learn from them, their great stories of their triumphs, their victories, and sometimes their difficult times. We trust that you enjoy this story. Today we have special guests with us, a family business. We have Isabella Foods. We have Mr. Diego Guerra, Mr. Nelson Guerra, and Omar Guerra, father and sons. So, Mr. Diego Guerra, tell me, what is Isabella Foods? Well, first and foremost, we'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for having us on the platform. We appreciate the opportunity to speak with you guys today and, and share our story. But Isabella Foods is, is basically a food manufacturing uh, operation. We specialize in prepared Mexican food and, and that being authentic and premium Mexican food. Like what kinds of? So specifically, we specialize in chile rellenos, tamales, salsas, uh, menudo, and those, those types of prepared foods. We also have a full-blown tortilla operation that does corn flour, uh, flour tortillas, as well as tor tortilla chips. And how big is the business? Right now, we are at about 48 employees. We operate in a five-state area. And so we're, we're, we're fairly, fairly, uh, fairly big in that regard, but we're expanding as well. Uh, our, our food service distribution is, 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 is fairly developed, but we're also pushing into retail and, and, and expanding that side of the business. How many years has Isabella Foods been around? Isabella Foods has been around since 2001. We incorporated in 2000, but it began operations in 2001. And when did you come into the business? I myself came into the business in 2010, the summer of 2010 and then officially in my capacity in about uh, 2013. And what role do you play now in the business? I am the general manager of the business, uh, primarily focused on business development, and uh, also I oversee the prepared foods operation. Mr. Nelson, get up. <clears throat> You've been with the business from the beginning, right? Yes. These are your sons. So um, how in the world did you start this business? In the past or present? In the present. In the present, um, the, the role in business, my role in business is uh, right now president and CEO. I start in 2021 20, uh, with Javela Foods, dedicated to the manufacturer and distributors and processing products. We move from distributors uh, to manufacturers. Okay, okay. So you started manufacturing now, now you're considered distributing. You, you're manufacturing, but you're also distributing now. In his line of business, he started out first as a distributor and now he's a manufacturer. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And Omar, you came to the business when? Um, officially, I would say that I came into the business around 2017, 2018, um, I guess officially, of uh, being a family business. So I think we've been in the business right around okay. 2001 in some point, in some form, but um, about 20, 2018. And what role do you play? Um, my title is Director of Operation. I overlook our accounting. Uh, shipping and receiving, um, things of that nature. And you studied at UTEP? Yes. And what did you study? Uh, I'm not, I have not graduated yet, but I am uh, studying finance. Okay. And you went to what high school here in El Paso? Eastwood High School. Ah. El Paso's <coughs> finest. Hey. And, and Diego, you went to? I also went to Eastwood High School, class of 2010. And I did, uh, I did graduate from UTEP uh, in 2014, so the centennial year. And I graduated with a Bachelor's of Business Administration with a concentration in accounting. Did that help you with the business? I think very much so. Very much so. There's things that you can always pick up in practice. But I think that school prepares you in a way that, that you might not get the opportunity to develop in practice. You know, there's some things that you, maybe you don't have uh, the, the right mentor or the person, the person that is, is your mentor is not giving you that the same 
quality time that you would be getting in, in school. Sure. Mr. Gett, I've known, I've known you for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you came to El Paso. When did you come to El Paso? In 1978. And where did you come from? From Puerto Rico. You were born in Puerto Rico. Born in Puerto Rico. Yes. Now, when you were in Puerto Rico, you, you started business early, right? Yes. Uh, 17 years, more or less. Uh, I started with uh, a little business, uh, wholesale, uh, with the closing... Uh, um, closed department. Closed department, yes. Wow. Um, start in 1967. 1967. Um, uh, this time, have too much problem with uh, working with banks. Oh. Don't have the the age. Uh, uh, need. Uh, he didn't take him serious. Yeah, need. And uh, at this time, uh, these uh, need uh, uh, emancip emancipation oh, okay. from my uh, my father emancipate to uh, generate my. Uh, majority, uh, majority, uh, majority. Well, to, well, to be of age. To yeah, age. age. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. so he, so he, he let him go. Let mm -hmm. him go. You meant. And starting the my first uh, stores in 1967, October 1967. How old were you? Right now. Yeah, how old were you? In 60, when, when you started the business? In 1967. How old? How old did you have? 19 years. Wow, and you started your business? Yes. And you were very successful at it? Yes, yes. And you grew that to, to how big? Uh, the first world uh, compete with... Uh, In, in, in the big and small, as medium, medium uh, uh, stores in 1967, but with different lines of uh, recognized uh, brands in, in, at this, in, in this year, no? But it was retail. Retail. Mm -hmm. But then you came to El Paso in 78? In 78, yes. But working with my stores for 10 years. ¿Cuántas tiendas tuviste? Uh, one, two, three, four, four different uh, stores. Four stores, In wow. 10 years. When you came to El Paso, you decided to live in El Paso. Uh, mm, yeah. uh, starting El Paso in 1978. The life. And what did you do? What did you, do? You, you came leaving the business in Puerto Rico and you came here? Mm, uh, this is a good question, <laughs> <laughs> but close everything. You did. Yes. Um, for different reasons, but uh, starting El Paso in 1978. From nothing. So from zero. From zero. From zero. So yes. So you came flat. Flat. And, and what did you start doing? What? I started in 1978 in a little tortilla factory uh, in Alameda Street. Did you, did you start that or did you buy that? Buy the tortilla factory. Uh, the owner financed for uh, three years. Uh, no money down. Start. That's good. So you With many the little machine equipment, uh, a little equipment. So you started manufacturing tortillas. Yes. And that went well. Where, where you grew that? Mm, the my my the in tortilla the first five years, uh, seventy eight to eighty three, very very hard, very very hard. 
Really? Yes. Um, too much difficult to um, to develop and too much difficult with uh, relation with banks in too too much difficult uh, a at very this time. very very um, uh, neighborhood neighborhood business. Yes, neighborhood yeah. business. And so you couldn't get the financing. <laughs> Yeah, don't have financing, don't, uh, working day to day. So no, don't have capital. Uh, too, too difficult. Every 78 to five years. Wow. In the meantime, you're having a family. So how many children do you have? <clears throat> uh, right now, five. Five. And... Um, And so, uh, so how did that, how did you, you got stuck there with a small business with tortillas and what, what made it, because you kept growing. How'd you do that? But close in 19, in, in 1983, close in February 28th, close the business, I start with a friend to sales plastic bags. Uh, working with him for uh, two months, two month transition for uh, in my my uh, idea, I start with distributors uh, distribution and talk in 1980 March 80. 83, talk to a friend in El Paso Drive, El Leo Valadez passed away, uh, and he interest in, in talk to me, express the, the opportunity to You purchase my, my products on sales. I'm manufacturing. This is Mr. Leo Valadez. Best Buy. Best Buy. I start with him in April 21. So he was already... The new business. He was already manufacturing? Yeah. At this time, yes, Mr. Valadez. But he needed, he needed sales. Mm -hmm. He needs sales. Don't have sales so you, at this moment. But... You, uh, I working with uh, my my business in in Intermix um, to distribute the the products. So you were a distributor for Best Buy for Best Buy tortillas for Best Buy tortilla for 15 years. And then that grew to how big? Uh, a big. Uh, In my whole business, create four, four, four or five another uh, uh, business in machine shop, uh, really? plastic bags, uh, polystyrene. Uh, uh, so you started several businesses. Out yes, of yes. Uh, at this uh, uh, in nineteen. 80, in 1989, I start with um, 84 with Intermix, 80, 88 with uh, Tequita House Food, um, 89 HB Corporation, um, 92 Dino Poly Bags, 94 Dino Dinosa Plastic in 96 in Arizona Crispy Corp. Wow. All those a potato chip started. company. Wow. Wow. You got these dates down really good. That's super. <laughs> That's wonderful. So so the story is then something happened and you had to, you started Isabella Foods a little later. 
But what happened with, with, with that? Uh, in, 19, in 2000, in 2000, received uh, close every every uh, business. Uh, okay. In 2000, uh, in 1999, the my contract with Best Buy Tortilla Factory due in April. Uh, start my own business in manufacture. Uh, use the name of the Gita House for uh, manufacturing in the same building uh, in El Paso Drive uh, in the same building El Paso Drive uh, making tortillas tortillas to cover to cover the space of uh, Best Buy. Okay, but. Uh, too much difficult, um, no work, the, the, the business, no, no, no working. And in my, in my mind, mind, yes, but in the, in the reality, reality, no. The compete no me llevó the, the mission food in El Paso. Mission Food, no en El Paso. Mission Food purchased the Best Buy. Okay. This is the, the collapse with uh, Mission Half uh, Gruma Corporation. Uh, uh, big power, no? Yeah. Um, uh, Working, uh, entramos en una demanda. Uh -huh. Entramos a. Pues, sí. Sí. Quisimos demandarlos uh -huh. eh, y trabaja, estuvimos demandándolo Duró como un año y algo. Y took to court. Uh -huh. Pero estaba tratando con un poder, o sea, no estaba tratando. Yeah. Y posiblemente hoy. Si me lo preguntan, pienso que estábamos equivocados. Muy equivocados. So you, Pero luché por eso. So you fought in court? No. That? No, no en court. Oh, ok. En. Um, uh, oh, just discussions. Discussion and. Um, With legal teams involved, of course, yes. but they never made it to. To. Okay. Uh, mediation. Because they, they, in a sense, took away your business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y eso desgastó, me desgastó, o sea, wow. un desgasta el... So, time and money and, and then... Yes. So, 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 you ended up again flat. Yes. Estar After again. After building a very big Estar business. Estar again. Yes. Ooh. Estar again. So, It's in my life. <laughs> see. So, tell me, when did your father start again? Well, he started Isabella in... In two thousand, well, yeah. Te technically, it was my older brother that founded the business, because Mr. Gatter was going through the the bankruptcy proceedings for for Intermix. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But Isabella, Isabella was born out of a need to cover the demand that was left behind. Okay. When 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 uh, Intermix exits the market, because so, he he don't, Mr. Gatter had already opened up a market. Correct. He had already yes. built demand. It, it was at a four state. Four state region, yes, for, across a four state region. Wow, that he was uh, distributing tortillas and other and other goods, right? They had different different lines and products that they would distribute. But basically, he tried to cover the the hole that that Grupo Corp left when they when they bought Best Buy. So he already had all this demand <coughs> built up for tortilla products, and so he tried to make tortilla products, and that's where Isabella started. Okay, why Isabella? Why the name Isabella? <laughs> it's, a, it's funny, but well, as Mr. Nelson Guerra alluded to earlier, we're, we're of Puerto Rican descent. Uh, Omar, myself, and Juan Carlos, uh, the youngest brother, we are of mixed heritage. My mother is Mexican, and so you know we're 
basically Puerto Ricans making Mexican food. And, and the, the reason why it's Isabella is because my, my grandma, Silvia, my, my father's mom, uh, rest in peace, she just passed away this past uh, November. Wow. But uh, she was born in Isabella, Puerto Rico. Okay. Right. And so, it, it, so to, to, for the people that, that know us and, and that know that we're Puerto Rican in the business, it's almost like a, an Easter egg for us. So, so you really grew up in the business. Mm -hmm. You grew up in, with Isabella Foods as part of your, your life. Correct. Correct. Very so, much so. so. So as you come into the business, well, you, through high school, were you working in the business at all? Uh, not, not on payroll. I was never on, on payroll throughout high school. Neither was, was no. Omar. <clears throat> but, uh, I mean, I've, I remember, I remember there's days where we would have to come in and help clean, right? That's, we were doing maybe maintenance on, on, on the plant and it was a Saturday or a Sunday and we'd come in. Throw there. the floor. Yeah. We'd come in yeah, there and scrub for, floors yeah. or yeah. whatever it is that we needed to do. Yeah. Pulling weeds. Uh, I remember <coughs> very vividly and I talk about this, this quite a lot. One particular day, I think I was around 10, my father had just, just started a, it's a new project with Walmart, and they were doing uh, warm tortillas. So then you see that nowadays, right? You see that nowadays with, with tortillas here in El Paso doing the ice coolers, and they have warm tortillas on the ice coolers and stuff like that. But that concept back in the day was foreign, and this was maybe like 2000 and. 2006, maybe? Eight, seven, 2007? Seven. Six. Yeah, 2006, Six, 2007, seven. around there. So I was around that time. <clears throat> and he took me to the Walmart on, on Mesa Street. And what we were there to do is to set up a, a tortilla display. And so I remember very, very vividly how we first had to put the tortillas up. And I, I hated the fact that I had to go there, right? I was, it was on a Saturday or a Sunday. I don't quite remember which day. But I hated the fact that he, had, he, t he took me. Like, I didn't really want to go at first. And then once we set up the display and I started seeing how consumers were picking the tortillas up, I mean, it was fascinating to me. You know, and I remember asking my, my father if that, you know, hey, dad, those are the tortillas that, that we make in the factory? And he says, yes. Uh, people actually like the tortillas? He says, yeah, we're doing fairly well. You know, oh, that's, that's you know... That was intriguing to me. And then you would hear the comments and somebody actually came up to my father and said, hey, you know, we've been buying these tortillas for the last few weeks. They're the best tortillas we've ever had. So that filled me with a lot of pride. And I think that's kind of where I feel like I started. And how old were you then? I think I was around like 10. So I don't know if it was quite 2007, but I was yeah. around like 10 years old. Yeah. So Omar, what is it like growing up in a family business, kid? It's uh, special. Um, things that you don't realize too much when you're younger, but as an adult, you can look back and see that uh, uh, it's different. Um, my father, thankfully, always very present. Well, we grew up playing sports. Uh, he made sure to be there for all of our games and whatnot, but um, we did miss him during the week. There'd be some times where um, we'd come home and uh, from school, and he wasn't home yet, and there's times where he, we wouldn't catch him. By the time he came home, we were asleep. So it's a special, um, but um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I feel like it's taught <clears throat> a lot of, uh, from a young age, a lot of a perseverance. Um, like I said, as a kid, maybe I didn't see that, but you, you soon start seeing that uh, your father is working and he's working hard and he's doing it for you. And uh, that's the experience that I can see now as a as an adult is um the sacrifices that my father did for us uh i remember that very vividly and um some of those stressful at times when i was a kid like where's my dad but uh he never missed any basketball games i'll tell you that that's great that's pretty <laughs> big that's so pretty saturdays big. were he was filled up saturdays at the ymca so so what is your father's biggest strength did you say <clears throat> uh my father's biggest strength is um, I would have to say, it's kind of easy to say his passion, but that's definitely up there. And, um, I think his heart just, um, loving. Mm -hmm. So finding the energy to do things when things might seem tough, 
um, for the ones he loves. His tenacity. How would you describe? I would it? definitely say that his tenacity is is to me the most the most impressive aspect the, that he that he carries the, the biggest character trait in my opinion because he's had to pick himself up so many times but there's just no quit in him you know he's he's nope. shown us that there's absolutely no circumstance under which you should quit do you have an idea of how big the fall was that your father had to get back up from kind of alluding to what omar were or continuing on with what omar was saying you don't necessarily know that until later, right? I think that as an adult, I can appreciate how much of a fall that was and how big, how big of a fall it really was. As a, as a child growing up, I couldn't, I couldn't comprehend it. I didn't even know that my father was successful, right? He was just my father. He's my dad. I didn't know how, how successful he had been and how, how big the business was. I didn't know that. You know, I just knew that he worked at Intermix and that it was Intermix. And then when he started Isabella, I didn't know if Isabella was big or small. or it, that, that doesn't really come to the point, right? You know what's interesting is, is that, that, that the fall, in other words, losing the business, mm -hmm. didn't come because your father made mistakes. Quite the contrary, he'd been, making, he'd been having success. Mm -hmm. It was something totally foreign outside mm -hmm. of his... Control is that fair to say? I think that is partially fair to say. No. So so no There's matter outside pressure, hundred percent. So no matter how strong he was, mm -hmm. it still came, in a sense, crashing down. Correct. And of course, it gets up again. Correct. But but it's not because those were external forces. Period. They were external forces. Correct. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you sharing your story. Going to. Continue a second with our second um, half of the program, but I uh, have a great sense of of a family together now building something strong. So we got to find out about that now. Today, Isabella Foods is what kind of a business? We are a manufacturer. You are a manufacturer. We are a manufacturer of prepared and authentic Mexican food. Authentic Mexican food. Yes, sir. So you manufacture that? Yes, sir. How do you deliver said food? <laughs> how, do you, how do you deliver prepared foods? Right. So the majority of our, our food that is prepared, or our prepared food, is frozen. And we have two segments that we play in in the market. We play in the food service segment, which is our, our, our strongest segment that we're in. We also play in the retail segments. So we do a little bit of business to consumer through, there, through that, through grocery stores and, and that sort of business. But the, again, the majority of our business goes through food service and the food service distributors. So broadline distributors such as Cisco Foods, Benny Keith, Shamrock, Labatt, U.S. Foods, those types of businesses. They pick a product at our warehouse and then they distribute it out to, to the different restaurants in the, in the area and the region. They're the food distribution businesses. Correct. They're, they're, they're the distributors, correct. And so you manufacture and they... They, they buy it from you. Correct. And they distribute out to customers like uh, La Posta in Mesilla, Garcia's Kitchen in Albuquerque, and then locally, Allen J, Carlos Amiquis, uh, La Malinche, those sorts of businesses. And what role do you play again? I'm general manager, and I, I focus on business development. So what does that mean? So those are my, those are my accounts. Those are the accounts that I, that I work heavily with. I'm on the phone pretty much all day with either buyers or sales, uh, sales team members trying to develop more business, basically. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and Mr. Guerra, you, you started this years ago in what year again? 1970. Uh, no, 2001. Isabella. Isabella. Isabella, uh, 20, 21. 2001. 2001. 2001. I'm sorry. And, um, and so... So you started the business, and your sons were still young when you started. So what do you do now in the business? You're the president of the business? President and CEO, yes. And you watch everything? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And Omar, you came in the business. Us what to do. <laughs> you came in the business when? Uh, 2018. And what do you, what do you manage? 
Um, I overlook our accounting and our shipping and receiving. Um, while I was going to school at UTEP, uh, I, that's when I started working at Isabella's. So um, my father and my mother at the time was uh, still involved in the business. Um, put me in account. Uh, put me started me with some payroll and uh, uh, some bookkeeping and things of that nature. So uh, as I've grown, I've um, overlooked the, our bookkeeping now and and uh, just expanding a little bit on that. So do you consider yourself a CFO or something? Um, we don't give titles. My father's never gave us any titles, but uh, yes. You manage you manage that whole financial side. Yes. And you like that. I love it. What have you learned about the business? What have you learned? Um as far as business. I mean what I've I guess what I've uh, really appreciated to, throughout the business is uh being able to see um our forecasts and planification go into play. Um, sometimes it's not the way we think it, it we're applying on it on it going but um being able to adapt and learning to adapt and being able to see the numbers um come full circle that's that's kind of what i what i enjoy seeing um when one plus one adds up to two it's a beautiful thing so you have to prepare the financials and how is the financing been have you been able to have access to financing if you need it um not throughout the history of the company um definitely not throughout the history that i've been there uh, things have been a lot better as of late, um, thankfully, uh, due to um, numerous things, but things have been better, but uh, access to capital has not always been uh, easy. You had to struggle. Very much so. Oh, wow. So what's it like having a family business? What's it like, uh, Diego? Mm -hmm. How do you guys make decisions? So having a family business, is, it's a beautiful thing, as, as Omar, Omar was, was saying. Obviously, we spend a lot of time together and the majority of our day together. Mm -hmm. How in the world did you come to that agreement? So I think, I think it's just been the natural progression, but it has been a process. And so I would say that when it first started that we determined that we were going to make decisions this way was during COVID. I mean, it was a difficult time for the business, but it was a time also when I think uh, we needed to start to think outside of the box, right? Doing things the way that we were doing them before just was not going to cut it for us anymore. And it just became the natural progression of, of, uh, of the business. You know, we were sitting down one day and we decided that, hey, you know, I, think, I think that we should just all agree that this is the way that we should do it. All, four, all three of us, and not just all three of us, right? That everybody that works at Isabella is affected by the decisions that we make every single day. And so if it's a big decision, we should all be on the same page about it. Maybe we're not all going to be in agreement, but as long as two of us are in agreement, then, then we move forward with that. So how close are you to the employees in manufacturing? Very close. Like, very close. I do. I, 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 you know, we, I think all three of us, I, I would say, are, are extremely close. We know everybody by name, on a first-name basis. I, I have to work with them, primarily myself. I, I work with uh, the prepared foods plan quite a bit, quite heavily. So I'm there almost every day. And uh, definitely, wow. definitely very close. So how many dozen tortillas do you manufacture a day? On the corn tortilla side, we do 2,400 dozen an hour. It's about a 10, 10, 10 hour shift, right? Four days a week. Flour tortillas, we're looking at about uh, anywhere from four to 600, depending on the size, the size that we're running, four to 600 dozen per hour. Again, uh, about a 10 hour shift. On tortilla chips, we're looking at about 700, 650 to 700 pounds an hour on the tortilla chip line. And uh, that's, that's pretty much the tortilla operation. I'd say. And tamales? Not sure. Tamales, we're putting out right now 60 pieces a minute. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. No, it's quite a bit of tamales. So, so, so that, that's pretty hefty. I mean, you have to buy a lot of material. Correct. And I think that that's something that we're now starting to open up more. Uh, and especially the discussion amongst ourselves because we've never had to purchase <clears throat> material that way, especially not not uh, perishable material as in meat and mm -hmm. produce and so forth in the manner that we're now having to do it. And so it's been a very much a topic of conversation to us on whether or not or when we contract produce, where we contract our meat, how we go about that, what is the, what is the qualification for a supplier, and so forth. That's, that's been a very hot topic 
for us in the last few months. So quality, quality control is really important. It is very important, correct. Very mm -hmm. important. So let me ask you, Mr. Guerra, um, when you started Isabel Foods, you'd already been manufacturing tortillas for many years with your company was Best Buy and you had several companies. Mm -hmm. and, and then you had to start again. Um, well, he was distributing them. He was not manufacturing them. Oh, you were the correct. distributor. That's right. That's yes. right. These two. And, and, and today, you're a manufacturer, but you don't distribute or you do distribute? We do locally, locally. yes. We locally, do locally. Yes. Um, locally, you distribute. Yes. Yeah, but yes. I wouldn't go as far as saying that we are one, though, just because it's strictly local. Mm -hmm. But um, the majority of our, of our, our, our production is, is leaving on a truck that's not labeled as a ballast. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so you, you work through distributors to distribute your product. <laughs> Correct. Correct. So, so did you ever imagine, Mr. Guerra, the business today? Did you ever imagine what it would be when you started? Casi te volteaste, ¿no? Pues sí, es del cielo a la tierra. <laughs> it's a total... Total... It's total difference. The total difference, yes. ¿Pero te lo imaginabas? Siempre imaginé algo más grande que lo que estamos haciendo ahorita. Siempre lo imaginé. You still, you más still, grande que lo que estamos haciendo. You still haciendo. see a bigger business. Yes. And you still want to get to a bigger... Y lo, todavía lo veo. So you're still working to make todavía it Todavía lo veo, yes. How I big? see every day. Every day you see the, growth. The, the, the development. The, mm -hmm. Possibility and opportunity. Yeah. Based on opportunities, yes. Oh, you see the opportunity. You see an open door. Yes. Ah. And you smell it. Because you, <laughs> cause, you know the world out there, right? You know the consumer. Is that right? I think that would be fair to yes. say yes. So, so how, do you, how do you know that? How, how do you know that? How do you sense that market? Uh. El, el, ¿Tienes que la pregunta? No. O sea, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo, ves el, cómo sientes siente el mercado? El mercado? Uh -huh. o, ¿O cómo tú te sientes? El mercado, el... el mercado para mí hoy es muy diferente al mercado que yo conocí. Muy diferente. That's right. But uh, the opportunity is in the place. Because when you started, of course, manufacturing Mexican food wasn't that popular? Mm. No, y, y right now it's more popular. Sure. Yes, yes. You've opened yes, up the market. Yes, you opened up yes, the whole yes, new field. Yes, yes, yes. And there's more demand for prepared yeah, food. Yeah, the demand is bigger. The and demand is bigger. The competition is the big problem right now. Oh, With okay. the sophisticated machinery and this is it's the... So now you have competition in manufacturing. Wow. By out-of-town out of companies? Correct. Yes. By big manufacturers. Big, yes. food, big, big, food, big, big huge uh, equipment. Is, there uh, is, however, a very, very large and present opportunity today mm -hmm. because we had one of our largest competitors exit the market. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes, we did. Yep. So right now we are grinding the wheels because there's a very, very large opportunity. So that's a challenge for you. Mm -hmm. It is, it is because challenge. at this point in time, so Omar alluded to this before. Uh, <laughs> he alluded to the, the agility, the, the ability to change pace and, and pivot and, and adjust as needed. That's, that's a beautiful thing about running a family business is that you don't have to, you can make the decision right there and then, mm -hmm. right? You, all it takes is, Five minutes in Mr. Guerra's the office or in Omar's yeah. office or in the conference room or mm -hmm. wherever we might be at the time, and you can make a decision like that. You don't have yeah. to go to a board. And you, you, don't, no. you don't have to. I mean, this is this, at is this the moment, board, right? Yeah. yeah. He's, at, at, this, at this point in time, he, mm -hmm. him and my, my mother are the board. And so <clears throat> right now with, with, with our competitor exiting the, the marketplace, it changes a lot of what your plan was, right? How you're going to go look for money. Uh, where you're going to look for money, and what you're going to do with that money. So you might have had a plan that you thought maybe, you know, we're going to continue to build on the tamale, tamale mm -hmm. line, and we're going to continue to build with, you know, corn tortillas. Those were our two focus items. 
and all of a sudden there's a huge opportunity for flour tortillas and there's a there's an even bigger opportunity for prepared meats stuff that we weren't even touching right but it's, it's there and it's for the taking and you know i think that we are primed to take that opportunity because of the way that we developed our network of distribution so we'd like to say that isabella has grown horizontally right meaning we have a very broad distribution and now what we're trying to do is build on top of that distribution so now we're trying to build vertically uh you have a cisco you have a Benny Keith, Shamrock, U.S. Food, all, all these distributors, Labatt, where you're serving them with corn tortillas, but you weren't serving them flour tortillas. Now you are. Mm -hmm. And you were serving them chile rellenos and salsas, you know, but now all of a sudden, tamales are big. And now you want prepared meats, and now you want prepared entrees, and now you want more flour tortillas. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, you start adding items on top of this network that you built, and then you're going to start to see the vertical growth. Totally. So we're very we're primed for it. So, so, so you have two sides of growth. One is more product. Mm -hmm. we, first did, we first did the network. Yeah, we, we, we established the map. network first. Okay. And I, th I think that looking back on it, I, I think it's the healthiest way to have done it. I can't say that it was by design that we did it mm -hmm. that way, to be honest with you. But looking back on it, like, hey, you know what? We actually, we, we got that one right. I think we got it right. Because you had a sense for it. We had a sense for it, correct. Okay. So we wanted to be, we said, look, we, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily foresee it this way, right? Because sometimes, especially when, when you grow up, or, or speaking for myself, when you grow up in the business and you're a manufacturer, all I'm thinking about is manufacturing, right? And this is, Maybe to allude to the conversation we had about who the entrepreneur really is. I think this is where you have your, well, when I had my entrepreneurial awakening, is when I realized that it doesn't necessarily have to be Isabella that manufactures the product. Right? There's opportunity, and you can fill that opportunity by teaming up with other manufacturers. Oh, okay, okay. Correct? okay. Or... Or becoming a distributor of a of a of a foreign line. Maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's a green chili line, or maybe it's a a line of cookies or pastries that you found in in Mexico. Somebody trying to break into the market, or maybe it's flour, maybe it's corn flour, mm -hmm. maybe it's whatever. Right? Wow. It's items that you can add to your portfolio. So one of the issues with growth mm -hmm. is the we just didn't know how. Well, I think I think we have a very good idea now of how we're okay. how we're doing it. Okay. Omar, I'm looking at the, you know your numbers, right? Um, are you concerned about rapid growth? Is that a concern? It is not a concern today, no. Um, it might have been more of a concern a year ago, but it's not a concern today. You can handle rapid growth. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. we've, we've been preparing for that. Okay. How did you come out of COVID? What did that do for you? Yeah, COVID was interesting. It was a... Uh, in in at least in Omar and and my experience personally, that was our largest challenge, one hundred percent. And when COVID struck, we were very much a food service manufacturer. We almost exclusively dealt in food service. We we didn't play in the business to consumer market. I think, I mean, it would probably be. Saying, saying that it was, it, maybe, maybe the, the number that I'm going to throw out is even too much, but I think maybe 2% of our total business was business to consumer. So retail-oriented products, salsas and that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. When COVID hit, now remember that's the day, the day after uh, St. Patrick's Day. In March. It was, April. I mean, March. immediate, March. right? Immediate. This, your business came to a screeching halt. Really? You had POs and Omar... Omar mentioned this on a, on a separate podcast that we had to throw away so many tortillas because you had to produce all these tortillas for POs that you had and and they're perishable goods right it's not like frozen food where you can just put it in the freezer but from one day to the next they they cut your legs out from underneath you i mean you know you, you can't you can't sell to your your customers because your customers can't open their doors and that was a very School's very closed. very 
immediate reality for us. And so, again, to add to what Omar was saying about agility, we had to make a change, and we were fortunate enough that we were speaking to Affiliated about adding different products. Affiliated Foods is a, is a cooperative distribution company, and what they do is they bring together independent grocers and build a buying power is what they do. So they, they centralize buying power in one distribution center, and then they serve various various uh, independent grocers like uh, Food King, for example, uh, Vista Market, Food City, San Eli Supermarkets. Those those chains are involved in the, in the local, cooperative. Right? Now, there's, those are local chains, but they're yeah. involved in the cooperative. But anyways, we were speaking with Affiliated on on how or what items they we needed to add. And so we were talking about putting our tamales in, in a shelf-stable presentation, putting our chile rellenos in a shelf-stable presentation, the flautas, salsas in the future. And when COVID hit, we had to accelerate that program. So we were not necessarily... We were not necessarily ready to launch with the packaging that we wanted, the features in the packaging that we wanted, but we had to get started. We had to get started. And so we were fortunate that, uh, that Affiliated was also seeing extreme demand because as we, as we all remember COVID, you couldn't keep anything on the shelf. Any, whatever you put on the shelf sold, right? Wow. And so they were, they were willing to take on the line and, and, and we grew that business. And now it's about 18% of our business, the, the retail side. And we're, we're looking to continue to grow that. Wow. <laughs> that, that's... So... So, Mr. Guerra, what value have your sons brought to you now in growing your business? A big value. <laughs> what does A it mean? Value. What does it mean to be able to work with your sons? Um, I'm very happy. Sure. Yes, very happy. Sure. We made sons. And you have other children. What, what do all your other children do? Mi hijo mayor, Aramis, está en el negocio del petróleo. Está envuelto en lo que es el petróleo. So he's in the oil business. Oh, oil business. Um, el más chico está con él. Okay. Tiene, es un gran vendedor. So the youngest one is a salesman yeah. in the oil. Wow. A good uh, salesman. Mm -hmm. He's he's the, he's definitely the salesman of the family for sure. He's good looking, so it comes my, to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter is a lawyer. She's a lawyer. Yes. Where in in La Florida, in Orlando. Florida. In Florida. Yeah. Okay. She lives in, in Orlando. Wow. Uh, and Diego, y Omar. Yeah, that great. And your wife still works with you a little bit? My wife uh, working with me in my house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. More well, like on the, re uh, on the real estate business. Uh, oh, real estate. Yeah, yeah. So he yeah. does also have real okay. estate business. Okay, wow. <laughs> well, that's amazing. You know, so, so with this expansion, what, what, what is your, I mean, that's your next challenge. Mm -hmm. um, how would you say, what is the future of Isabella Foods? Well, I think the future of Isabella Foods is to be determined, right? Because I think that we're, we have high aspirations for what we want the business to be. And, and I, we spoke about this in a previous discussion when I, when I last saw you. We want Isabella to be a legacy business, a business that continues to be a family business. That's, that's just been what I've wanted, and I, I feel that Omar would, would, uh, would uh, agree with me on that. And how big and or how far we can go, I mean, we're, we're going to take it as far as we can, right? As far as we can. Uh, but, but right now, expansion into Arizona. So we're, we're in there, but not, we don't have a strong presence yet in Arizona. So that's, that's a, a market of intrigue for us. And Denver in the Colorado market. That, wow. the, that is also, again, we have distribution into that market, but it's a, it's a market of intrigue. And then West Texas, which uh, the Lubbock, Odessa, the Permian Basin, 
that is also a market that we're developing. So those are our, our, our newest markets. Which goes all the way up to Dallas. Mm -hmm. Dallas, San Antonio, Dallas? Mm -hmm. that area. So, wow. we, so we, we want to further expand into Texas. We want to continue our expansion west into, into Arizona and develop that market. But there's definitely a, definitely a large opportunity here in this, in this region now because of what we mentioned, the exit of one of our competitors. What, what caused their exit? Mismanagement. Ah. So, so here's an interesting thing, right? And we talk about legacy business, but this was a business that did not have a succession plan. They sold, and the business, the, the, the new ownership that came in, they, they, I think they, they wanted to change the business model of the, of the, ex the existing business, and, and it, it hurt. It, it didn't go as planned, and two and a half years later, the you know they're out they're out so you've studied that pretty well i've been following it very very closely very closely so, so you know from their mistakes what yes, you sir. have to be careful with correct mm -hmm. wow mm -hmm. that's good that you yeah. so so diego are you an entrepreneur <coughs> i didn't i didn't quite fancy myself one uh had you asked me that five years ago i would have said no but i think that the the experiences that i've had especially COVID from, from COVID to now, I think have, uh, have shown me that I, that I do have that spirit in me. Uh, again, it's following in my father's footsteps to be tenacious and persevere through hardship is it's something that we've always done. But looking at business from a different angle and new business, I think is something that I've, that I've learned that, that, I, that I do have. I do have that, that capacity and no more as well. I mean, like we said, this just on Saturday we were speaking about diversifying into a separate business, and obviously something that that holds some synergy to what we're doing, but a different business and a separate venture, where it could be himself or my, myself and himself. So, Omar, are you are you also an entrepreneur? I would like to think I have entrepreneurial an entrepreneurial mindset. I don't I don't consider myself an entrepreneur yet, just because of. Um, what it means in a textbook. Uh, mm -hmm. I have yet to create a own business of mine. Um, I was raised by an entrepreneur, so the schooling that I have been taught has all been that. So I definitely have the mind for it, um, and uh, I'm up for the challenge. As something that we're constantly talking about is is being able to do. Uh, always, obviously, um, Isabel's has always felt like it's mine, um, ours, but. Um, Adding to that, just like Mr. Guerra mentioned um, with Intermix, um, he was able to start a company, see success in it, and build on that company uh, with other companies, um, keeping that synergy uh, yeah. in mind. Yeah. Mr. Guerra, you're definitely an entrepreneur, and you have a good uh, definition of an entrepreneur. What is an entrepreneur, Mr. Guerra? Uh, Nasser. Born, yes, a born, not, not, not a, yeah, uh, it's not, uh, it's it's not uh, a gift, yeah. I mean, it's a gift, it's not a, it's not learned, it's, it's innate, yes, yes. El, el ser en empresario, a mi ca, el, lo, lo que yo percibo y lo que yo entiendo que logré o he logrado ha sido basado en sacrificio, trabajar porque tiene que trabajar es. Muy duro. Sacrifice. Hard work. The hard, Too hard much work. sacrifice. Sacrificas Sac sacrifice. familia, sacrificas todo. Eh, muchas veces se dice el trabajo es primero, ¿no? No debe de ser así, pero cuando estás envuelto, así es. So you've got yeah. to make that, make that work. You've got to make it work. Trabajar muchas horas yeah. diarias para lograr. Y ellos saben, ellos, ellos lo, lo han vivido. As far as the saying that... Um, Sacrifice and family tends to be one of the things that comes up, and uh, we can speak on that. Um, and I feel like if you're going to sacrifice, then you got to make your sacrifice worth it. So if you are going to sacrifice some family time, mm -hmm. make it worth it. But yet, Mr. Guerra was able to do that, and yet raise a family. Y yo, y, y yo digo, bueno, el, el, el ser empresario... Uh, naces, naces el empresario yo entiendo que yo este, así lo hice y nunca vi el signo de dólares para nada you, you una just... de las cosas que yo nunca he visto es el signo de dólares yo siempre dije, las cosas vienen solas o sea, vienen por, no solas vienen por el trabajo so ¿no? you just worked yes, work, you, weren't, work. you weren't pursuing the dollar, you were just working no, 
Because that's what the entrepreneur does. Is build, building. Build. Mm -hmm. Hoy abajo, mañana arriba, y ese, no importa. No importa. Ups no, and down. no hay que darse. No hay que darse. You don't, you don't stop still. No. Just keep going. No, no, no stop. And, and, and all of you are doing that. <clears throat> well, listen, I really appreciate this great story of Isabella Foods. And, uh, and the expansion that's coming in the, the entrepreneurial family, in the entrepreneurial business. It's an entrepreneurial business, which is unique but it's very strong and very important. So I really appreciate all of you for sharing your story. And uh, we look forward to even greater, greater growth for Isabella Foods. But thank you so much for your time and for your sharing. Mr. Guetta, my, uh, as my admiration for what you've done with your family and for the business you've built. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Can thank we say you, thank a you. couple words just to, yes, please. So we would like to say thank you to my mother, right? That she's not here with yes. us uh, on the set today, but uh, we do want to recognize her and her 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 position and her place in in our family and, and and making this all work because God knows that you need a strong woman at home, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we also want to say thank you to all of our partners, everybody that that we do business with. You know, we appreciate the the back and forth and the opportunity to do continued business with them. And also to all of the team members at Isabella Foods for coming to work and, and showing up every day and yes. allowing, allowing us to <clears throat> guide the dream. Wow, fantastic. Yes, sir. Very well said. Thank you. And Appreciate thank you to yourself, for, to yourself and your team as well for the, the platform and the opportunity, sir. I thank you very much. And I thank the viewers for watching because without the viewers, of course, this is impossible. Thank you. Thank you. Have thank a good you. day. And thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I appreciate that very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Gracias.